slap, are you? Australian legends. Hey! Sir, can you knock? What's up everyone, Adam from FWCI. This is James A. Caster, the uh, stand-up special from 2019 by the looks of things. This show was recorded on the 17th of December 2019 is what I see on the screen right here. I only learned about James A. Caster when I reacted to season seven of Taskmaster. If you haven't seen my reaction to that, please do. I, I, go watch all the seasons, especially season four and season seven. They're definitely the standouts for me. But I immediately just started vibing with him. I loved his humor. I loved his comedy, I loved his jokes and his references and stuff like that. So I was immediately a fan of his. And what I've done since then, and this is actually relevant to this, um, I've reacted to his appearance on The Great British Bake Off and the section of this where he talked and the section of this stand-up special where he talks about that. So that's not going to be in this reaction because there's a video with the actual Great British Bake Off episode and the stand-up reaction already up on YouTube. So go check that out if that's what you're here to see. Uh, but I'll be watching the rest of it. I have been told in the comments that this gets quite heavy and YouTube's uh, community guidelines are pretty strict around certain topics. So I may have to cut certain chunks of this out i don't know yet we'll have to wait and see and uh usually i would put a full length version of this up on patreon but this is available on james acaster's website and that's the only place so if you want to see the full length version of it go to his website and check it out there uh, i'm just going to do an edited down version of this because i feel like it's just on his website i i, I don't want to be uploading a full length version of this anywhere else it feels a little bit meh but patreon.com slash fwci if you want early access to my other reactions including Taskmaster and a whole bunch of other stuff. But let's jump into it. This is James A. Caster. What's it called? Cold lasagna. I hate myself. Oh, live streamed one year later. Pretty cool. Yeah, I agree. Cold lasagna hate myself 1999. My bad. He and I are basically the same age as well, so... Uh, a lot of references and stuff that he talks about. I was the same age at the same time, so I'm all over it. Jesus Christ, look at this fucking rock star. <laughs> I fucking appreciate it. <laughs> Shit. <Jesus> Christ. <laughs> Another thing you gotta watch out for when editing for YouTube is lots of swear words all in a row. So I'm hoping that that's just the intro where he just went on a friggin' tirade there. I've been a pretty clean comedian. I don't effing Jeff that much. And as a result, I've attracted a demographic who, to be frank, I hate. <laughs> Bunch of old people and Christians every goddamn show. I'm fucking sick of it. <laughs> I hate old people so goddamn much. They're the stupidest people in the world and they tell comedians how to do comedy every night of the week. <laughs> Back in my day, comedians didn't need to swear. No, they were all massive bigots and you love that shit. Don't tell me. <laughs> what is I know some of you are sitting there all smug. Oh, I'm okay. I'm not an old person or a Crizzo. I'm in the clear. <laughs> yeah, perhaps, but you do know who your Patronus is. You're a fucking dork. <laughs> Mine was a, um, it was a dog, I think, a Rottweiler. Edgy comedians, no one tells them what they can and can't say. They walk straight on stage, top of their specials sometimes, do 10 solid minutes just slagging off transgender people. I'm a stand-up comedian. I'm meant to challenge people. Wow, okay. What's the matter, guys? To challenge it for you? That's my job. All right, hey, Caster. Look at you making a point here. Oh, yeah, because you know he's been long overdue a challenge. The trans community. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they've had their guard down for too long, if you ask me. <laughs> wow, good point. So apparently, it's 2019. Most people still more than happy to laugh at transgender people. Not as comfortable laughing at Ricky Gervais yet, I've discovered. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel it, I can feel it in the air, I can taste it in the sky. Old Crizzo Central. <laughs> and let me tell you, He's... I'm going to say whatever it takes to send most of you old Crizzos home in the interval. <laughs> he is just going in hard on the audience. Fucking Easter's overrated, I'd love a second referendum. I don't like that shit. <laughs> and get all the information together, then we can make our minds up based on a group of actual information. It's, it's a little bit like, um, oh, uh, you know every decision you've ever made in your life. <laughs> is he talking about Brexit at this point? This is 2019. I feel like that was around about then. 
You voted for Brexit. You had a specific version of Brexit in your head when you voted for it. I assume so. It would have been insane to do otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any idea the amount of promises I'd make if someone else had to do them? <laughs> I wouldn't care what I said. <laughs> Victory, not just for us, but for Great Britain and for democracy. Also, goodbye. Like, the politicians that got Brexit over the line all were, like, gone within the first six months. I think. Just forget all that Brexit stuff, get all that second referendum stuff. Look, I've always got a plan B. I'm going to do a little bit, little bit of a play for you. Oh, come on, Acaster. Give me the play. He is coming scorching hot, by the way. Okay, man walking, holding a book. Hello, are you ready to order? I can come back in a minute if you're not ready. It's a waiter, okay. Uh, just so you know, uh, people who wrote that menu, they don't work here. Go on. <laughs> is this still Brexit? I'm gonna try my best to get you a plate of shit, but don't hold me to that. You, you were very, you were very rude to the kitchen earlier. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> if you've ordered yourself a delicious steak dinner, your favourite meal, and the best the kitchen can rustle you up is a plate of shit, which in this scenario you do not like, by the way. Someone ordered food for you earlier. Let's just get it done and eat the shit. Someone ordered you a plate of shit. I'm guessing this is quite deep. Uh, UK politics right now. A lot of this is going over my head. I'm not getting the nuance of this whole bit. Like, I think I do, but I'm not confident enough to laugh about it. <laughs> a lot of people have hated that bit. <laughs> One guy hated it so much he emailed me about it. That's rare. Well, he emailed my agent and she forwarded it to me because it was funny. <laughs> I do not want a second referendum. I hated that routine. I like you when I've seen you on TV. You sit at the end and you're weird. I like that. <laughs> You had an idea in your head of what you wanted it to be, and when it wasn't that exact thing, you threw a sulk and lost your temper, is that correct? <laughs> I hate Britain. No, oh, I'd love you to see all of Britain, don't get me wrong, but full of absolute scabs. <laughs> scabs. So we're just up to the part where he talks about the Great British Bake Off and uh, yeah, there is a reaction to that already up on YouTube. I'll put it up there, I'll link it at the end of the video. I highly recommend it. I watched the episode, I watched the stand up, I watched the whole thing. If that's what you're here looking for, it's in a different video, go check it out. I'm gonna skip past that bit here and keep on with the uh, rest of the reaction. I've dealt with it, i processed it, but you lot are never gonna be the first people I'll come to. <laughs> Uh, that's a fair warning. It's a fair warning. 1999, easily best year of my life for loads of reasons. Uh, went on the best family holiday I've ever been on, for one. I was 14, so I wasn't old enough to decide if I went on the family holiday or not at 14. It's up to you this year, James. Do you want to come on the family holiday? Yes or no? First chance I got, I threw it right back in their faces. I'm like, no, <laughs> bad luck, mum and dad. I'm not coming on a family holiday ever again. Have a fun fortnight with my brother and sister, you absolute losers. <laughs> But an hour later, I was sick because, full disclosure, I drank too much hot chocolate. <laughs> Off the leash, full on Kevin McAllister, just sculling hot chocolates one after the other. <laughs> it's pretty wise of them to stagger the hot chocolates the way that they used to. <laughs> Good idea. But I put in 10 heaps teaspoons. And I really heaped them as well. You got a heap. Yeah. I mean, I'm Australian. We have Milo. You got to heap it. Take four of the smallest spoons you own and heap them as high as humanly possible. <laughs> That's what you would stay with. Come on, Acaster. Leave the hot chockey people alone. Just put two dessert spoons in. Just, just done. <laughs> Every night, that reaction. Because <laughs> nobody wants to have a hot chockey with a dessert spoon in it. That's a British response. Logically, it makes sense, but it'd feel wrong. So British people don't like it. <laughs> it's like if anyone ever makes you a cup of tea, like a clear glass mug. <laughs> Sorry, I only like to see the top of the tea. <laughs> Where all the scum and the bubbles are. That's my favourite bit. I love looking at that scuzzy, dirty top of the tea. I love looking at it. <laughs> all I've got is that little peephole to work with. Oh, there you are. 
Mm -hmm, you filthy top of the tea. Straight in the mouth, out that dirty dick. Straight in that dirty toilet of water. And then just shower it in the piss and the shit. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I don't know if British people like tea that much. Jesus. So long, Chrizos. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my sense of humour, it definitely doesn't suit my persona, it's very, very much not my type of comedy, but if it will nudge a few Baptists out the door, I'll say it. <laughs> Get out of here, you bappies. <laughs> bappies? Bloody bappos. <laughs> Long car journey on that 1999 holiday. Mum and Dad in the front of the car. Me and my brother and sister, all crammed in the back. It was 1999, so we all had our Discmans in. Keeping them level. <laughs> Discmans were fucking terrible. I listened to the entirety of the All Saints debut self-titled album All Saints <laughs> in the back of a Nissan Bluebird during a journey from Kettering all the way to Ilfracombe. Uh, oh, damn, Ilfracombe. No skips. <laughs> Hand me that spork, I'm gonna save a life. Never, ever, ever, ever felt so low. <laughs> you gotta take me out of this a black hole. <laughs> Time of death, 8.37. <laughs> He's got great and bad taste in music, exactly like me. I love it. I got that song stuck in my head. Sometimes vocabulary runs through my head. Is it about the man I killed? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I killed a man. <laughs> well, it'll sound silly now. <laughs> Remember this one? Yeah, that's one. Went to see an eclipse. The 99 eclipse was... It was a... If you don't remember, it's a solar eclipse. Uh, it v vaguely rings a bell. I don't know. If, did we get that in Australia? I don't know how that works. The moon is much better than the sun. I don't care who I'm offending with that. It just does more stuff. It's more versatile. Orbits the Earth. Controls periods. Fair play. <laughs> controls periods, man. And tights. Look, there's a woman on a yacht. That's all your jurisdiction, moon. You get involved. There's a whole hen night and a boogie boarding trip. Wreaked havoc. <laughs> Women live in the same house. Periods get in sync. Really? <laughs> I'm sorry, am I the only one not jaded in this godforsaken city? <laughs> I'm not 100% sure it's even true. <laughs> I'll never know, I'll never know. <laughs> sure, Some women have told me it's true. You know what, fuck it, let me know in the comments. Is it true? What's this? Okay, one or two fellas in the room don't appear to recognise a menstrual cycle when they see one. But All right, okay. <laughs> I'll power on through that. <laughs> fellas always letting the room down. Sorry everybody. Sorry room. No, it's absolutely fine. I just started watching The Sopranos myself, coincidence. Episode 9, Season 1 at the minute. Oh, I'm Episode 4, Season 1. I'll tell you what, I can wait for you if you like. I'll pause it, you can catch up. Watch it together. How's that sound? That'd be amazing, I'd love that. Let's <laughs> do it together. Ah, oh, nice to make a friend on day one. So now their periods are in, uh, in sync? Jesus. I guess there is a lot of blood in The Sopranos. Is that funny? Let me know in the comments. Actually, don't. <laughs> The world just seemed more innocent and stuff, you know? Everyone was reading the second Harry Potter book in 99. That's all that had come out. <laughs> all that existed. People are still calling her Hermione and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> He's making a really good point. The turn of the century, there was like, it was this kind of magical moment where technology had come long enough where we could benefit from it, but we hadn't like used it for the you know, day-to-day -day evil that you see used for these days. But we were like beyond, you know, the archaic, you know, time in the early 90s and the 80s where, you know, there was like, things just, you know, took a long time to do and everything was very manual and stuff like that. And uh, I don't know what it was. Culturally as well at that point, we were starting to see a lot of like alternative stuff really starting to, you know, become more popular and more accepted like you know types of music and types of comedy and stuff like that so i absolutely agree the end of the 90s beginning of the 2000s there was something about that period of time where everything seemed kind of uh in harmony a lot more than it does these days 2017 was the worst year of my life we have an interval now it's uh <laughs> that's the lead into the interval meet back here <laughs> 
Wow, interesting time to have the interval as well after, you know, really bracing the audience that we're about to hear some pretty uh, intense stuff. And I love his jacket as well, by the way. I just love the color of it and the design, the, um, the sunset looks great. My girlfriend left me, my agent dropped me, and I shit myself in a steakhouse. <laughs> oh, that's, a, that's a bad year. Uh, she left me, as is uh, tradition. <laughs> it's tiny. Not big enough for two people. Big enough for one person who was out a lot, I'd say. That's how big this flat was. <laughs> I've lived in a flat like that. Because I'm already sulky and mopey. Right? That's not an attractive look. But a standard door, that would have really helped me out. That's an outwards positive motion into a room. You don't realise how many favours that does your confidence that it's not an option anymore. But she, she must have hated seeing that. Just slowly unveiling my needy little face every morning. Anyone in the living room still in love with me? <laughs> this is going to be sad, isn't it? And this thought occurred to me out of nowhere, but seemed like a legitimate concern at the time. I just thought, oh no, I know what's happened. She's fallen in love with Rowan Atkinson. A logical conclusion. This is crazy, right? Even more crazy. Yeah, that is what happened. <laughs> what? What? I fell in love with Rowan Atkinson. Yeah, what are you talking about? If I've made that up, not very funny. If it's true, pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> pretty funny if it's true, right? And just in case you're not finding it funny yet, let me refresh your memory. Mr. Bean. <laughs> <laughs> Acaster and Mr. Bean are Eskimo brothers? And a full story about how they were a couple now. The first time in my whole life when I've discovered why someone left me and without any period of mourning whatsoever, just immediately gone, well, that is fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> you seen this? She left me for Bean. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I think she's fallen in love with Rowan Atkinson. I dismissed it because it couldn't possibly be a part of my life. <laughs> and now it was a part of my life. That's funny to me. And I'm very much the butt of that joke, by the way. <laughs> I've been judged by audiences night after night for this routine as if, if it happened to you, you'd keep your mouth shut and wouldn't tell anyone at work the next day. You'd all be running your mouth off immediately. Yes. If that happened to me, it would be the first thing I tell every single person I meet. Immediately. I read about this in a newspaper. It's 2019 now. I'm a saint to have kept this in the back pocket for this long, to be frank. <laughs> <laughs> If that happened to me, this channel would be called Mr. Bean's Eskimo Brother. I, I would not hesitate to do that. None of us, myself included, know what we're on about when it comes to the two of them. She met and she fell in love with Rowan Atkinson. Also, and this is very important, I got left for Mr. Bean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It comes back down to that every time. <laughs> and those two things can coexist. <laughs> uh, any of you ever been left for someone you've known your whole life? Maybe looked up to and admired. Maybe even the reason you work in the job you're currently working. <laughs> Ever been left for that person? You know, a hero and an icon. Ever been left for a hero and an icon, you snowflake wimps? <laughs> Jesus Christ, I can't stop. Because listen, until you get left for Mr. Bean, which, uh, fun fact, I'm the only person that's ever happened to. <laughs> ever. Not just in this room. Until you get left for Mr. Bean, let me tell you, you don't realise how frequently Mr. Bean pops up in your life. Really? Scrolling through Netflix is a very tense experience for me. I think I'd better find something quick. Otherwise, oh God, it's Johnny English. Why do I never suspect Johnny English? Ah, <laughs> oh, it's got enough films now. I should have suspected Johnny English. YouTube have recommended me Mr. Bean videos anytime I watch any comedy. He's got a Mr. Bean. You know what? Just quickly, uh, Rowan Atkinson live, his stand up special from sometime in the 80s, I guess is absolutely goddamn hilarious the entire way through. I cannot recommend it enough. It's, it's on YouTube, I'm sure. In fact, I'm pretty sure in one of the scenes he wears a pink um, turtleneck and blue tights. Very similar color scheme to what Acaster's. Sorry, Acaster. Mr. Bean did it first. Sorry to, to rub that in. Plus, I live in London, don't forget. That is prime bean town. <laughs> There's a souvenir shop round the corner from my own flat 
They sell masks of his face. <laughs> oh, right. like, round the corner from my flat, there are masks of his face, and I can feel the. Poor ha- bastard's been getting stalked and tortured by Mr. Bean for the last decade. And I've got to go past them and resist the urge to put one on, pretend to be him, and win her back that way. <laughs> completely, completely silent, which means it transcends all language. Which also means he's globally famous and I cannot escape him. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. It's huge in Australia. Ah, oh, my friend, where are you from? And I'm always like, England with pride! And I salute the top of my head off and dry hump the nearest bulldog. <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot. God save the Queen or bang as a mash. You, you know, things we say all the time. <laughs> Remember in the first half when we were all shouting bang as a mash non stop? <laughs> <laughs> you stop shouting bangers and mash, you lot, but no one tells us what we can and can't shout in our own goddamn country! Am I right, everybody? Bangers and mash! Bangers and mash, yes, fuck it up. If I was in that audience, I would have got that chant going way before that. <laughs> You're not allowed to say Merry Christmas anymore. You know, they're stopping us from saying Merry Christmas now. No, nope, never happened. That's never happened. Yeah, it's true. And even the person who said it went, yeah, now I hear it back. That doesn't really make sense. And everyone agreed, yep, yeah, let's not do that. Let's keep saying Merry Christmas. And all the racists went, right, I'm going to keep that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the reason why you're not hearing it is no one says it to you. Ooh, wow. I've been on holiday. I've had shopkeeper go, oh, my friend, where are you from? England. England? Mr. Bean, right between the eyes. <laughs> like a ninja throwing star. Mr. Bean! <laughs> oh my god. Stranger comes up to you and says, apropos of nothing, the name of your ex partner's new lover. <laughs> and because me and him were both quite physical, gangly comedians, like, I look like if I went down some stairs on my back. My body would just move in the shape of the stairs. <laughs> like a cartoon blanket, you know? Um, <laughs> oh, thanks for coming in, James. Uh, before you go, and I hope you don't mind me saying this, <laughs> and they have no idea how much I mind. <laughs> You're like a young Rowan Atkinson. We think you could be the new... <laughs> <laughs> Rowan Atkinson, James, how does that make you feel? <laughs> What I want to say in that situation is, well, I don't know, I mean, to one person, in one way, he's the new James Acaster, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> to one very specific person, yes. <laughs> this is the part of the show where I like to say to you, hey, thanks for coming, uh, do me a solid, please don't tweet about any of that stuff I just told you, please. <laughs> God, that laugh didn't reassure me. Do not tweet about any of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I've agonised over every single word of that routine, so it's clear it's about me. Oh no! But I don't think you're going to nail the tone <laughs> in a tweet. <laughs> I don't mean one of those smart asses who comes up the show tweeting me. Thanks for tonight's show, James. It has been a pleasure. Fuck you. None of you are funny. None of you are funny. <laughs> None of you are funny. <laughs> Clapping it like it actually is your joke as well. I wrote that joke and deliberately made it shit. <laughs> Audiences are the worst part of this job, I swear to high Christ. I swear to high Christ. <laughs> night after night, I'm the one out of everyone in the room who knows the most about comedy and I've got to win your approval. That is fucking demeaning. <laughs> no- I've heard of Brass Eye. Impress me. There's got to be people that have spoken to him in the past that hear this and they're like, wait a minute, I said that to him. But your banter is rude. (laughs) It's just saying rude things to a person you've never met before. (laughs) Oh my god. Ah, This is hitting me because uh, I do like to interact with people on Twitter and stuff. I always try and keep it uh, very respectful though, I I will say that. But, alright, but... But Twitter's an absolute cesspool though, man, like, or X, whatever it's called these days. It's a cesspool, so I can imagine the kind of shit that he does get. Do not subtle enough or tactful enough to make a joke work. Oh my god. Don't get annoyed about it, Rob Beckett's way funnier than you, mate. And then Beckett likes it like a worm. (laughs) I fucking love Rob Beckett as well. I thought you meant to have a sense of humour if you're a stand-up comedian. Uh, No, we're not. You are. That's the whole relationship you ever got <laughs> Why are half of you looking at 
I couldn't do what you do. Are you happy? You're special again. I couldn't do what you do. <laughs> Sitting down <laughs> night after night, talking to your again, mate about the so joke. He's hostile like the audience for no reason. Oh, he's got his reasons. Don't even tweet that you liked it. I know a lot of comments are like, cheers everyone, follow me on Twitter. Unfollow me, if anything. <laughs> so block each other and be done with it. I hate Twitter, I hate you. <laughs> he's so angry. Ragecaster is back. Can we all stop arguing about big, important issues on Twitter? Yes, I agree. And you're talking about some pretty spicy subjects. We all had pen pals when we were kids. You kept it light. <laughs> That's a good point. I don't think women who wear makeup are proper feminists. <laughs> Just sent that to Belgium. That's going to Belgium now, Mum. I see you've been talking about me and Rowan in your stand-up. Is that true? Apparently, you've been saying you got left for Mr. Bean. What what part of that is funny to you? <laughs> Come on, how do you not see it? I'm sorry to bother you, James. It's as funny now as it always has been. Rowan! <laughs> oh, no, forget about it. It's got his foot stuck in a tin of paint and a chicken on his head. <laughs> I need to get a chicken off a certain somebody's head. <laughs> oh, wow. I wonder what Rowan Atkinson thought about this. <laughs> Two years ago, there was an up-and-coming columnist who wrote for The Telegraph called Boris Johnson. And... Oh, God. British Trump. Women who wear burkas look like letterboxes. That's what Boris Johnson said. <laughs> What's the matter, guys? Too challenging for you? <laughs> Disgusting of Boris Johnson, an MP of all people, to make a joke like that in a newspaper of all places, especially in the current climate. Yeah. Valid call. Some comedians didn't agree with me. Rowan Atkinson, for example. Oh, Rowan Atkinson came out the very next day and defended Boris Johnson to the press. No one asked him to do this. Mm, oh, shit. That Boris Johnson's joke about women wearing burkas looking like letterboxes is actually a pretty good one. You should only ever have to apologise for a joke if it isn't funny. <laughs> Therefore, no apology is required. I mean, I kind of feel that a little bit. Well, that is... Good to know, Rowan. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that, uh, that took a bit of a turn at the end there. Jesus, I got a little bit personal, it feels like. I do hope you feel the same way about entire routines. Because <laughs> it was funny. I'm going to go home and write a little line about you having a chicken on your head. <laughs> The 2017 breakup, completely different. Completely different girlfriend, completely different set of circumstances. Obviously, I'd be impressed if he got me twice. <laughs> <laughs> Tip of the hat to you, Bean. I'll see you next time. I love he keeps going back to it. Blame the whole thing on myself. And that became a pattern for the rest of the year. Like, when my agent dropped me, for one, it's very much my word against his, this story. So what I've decided to do, and I think this is the fairest thing to do, is I'm only going to tell you his side of the story. <laughs> All right, that's a, that's a fair compromise, I think. As is, you can decide for yourself what you believe, what you don't, who's in the right, who's in the wrong. I won't try and sway you in any way. All right, lay it on me. Let's go. I ruined everything, and I did it for a laugh. Good start. Four specials commissioned for Netflix. Now, some of you might be sitting there like, hold on a second. I thought it was meant to be the worst year of your life. <laughs> I am a straight, white, cis, able-bodied, middle-class man. Even the worst year of my life, I'm getting a few Netflix specials. <laughs> <laughs> I was not yet allowed to announce those specials on any platform, certainly not live television. Oh, that's not good. I do plan on watching those specials, by the way. Even though my agent hadn't told me that I wasn't allowed to announce the Netflix specials yet, I knew anyway. <laughs> so that's where the disagreement is. You know that way that we're all born as little babies with an acute instinct for contractual law? <laughs> I knew every single thing I was and wasn't allowed to say. But here's the problem. I'm a stand-up comedian. I'm cut from a different cloth to the rest of you. <laughs> if you tell me I'm not allowed to say something... 
<laughs> you better believe I'm gonna say it, son. Because I love a prank, especially if the victim of that prank well. is my own career. <laughs> <laughs> the sarcasm in this whole bit. James, we see you're filming some specials. Where can we see them when they're finished? I didn't hesitate for a second. Engage pranking missiles and aim them at my own face and dick. <laughs> Netflix! <laughs> and I cackled like a madman and I sambled off the studio floor. <laughs> mm-hmm. What a hilarious prank for you to pull, man. Especially with your own career at stake. <laughs> Phoned him up, I put on a really innocent voice to sell the prank. Hey mate, how's it going? You see Sunday brunch went really well, don't you think? <laughs> he, is, he is not over this. There is so much spite coming through this whole performance. You just lost us the Netflix specials. This has gone even better than I ever could have imagined. <laughs> But I'm essentially pretending to reassure him when really I'm twisting the old knife. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, Netflix are an LA based company. They probably don't even watch. <laughs> Sunday Brunch. <laughs> <laughs> the intention was there. I see the intention, but no. It's all your fault, James. It's all your fault! Sounds like an asshole to me. It's high time that I launched phase two of the prank. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, what happened next? Convince him that him phoning me up every night of the week and telling me something is all my fault <laughs> might not be the best thing <laughs> yeah. for my head. Yeah, I reckon. Like, he sounds like a prick. To fake a breakdown. <laughs> Is this the breakdown that affected British Bake Off or a different one? I had spin and can we at least share some of the blame on this or something? Because at the minute all of it's being put on me. I know it sounds silly, but I can't cope with them. I'm not in a position where I can cope right now. I can't cope with any of this. <laughs> Prank accomplished. Alright, yeah, now we're getting into the serious shit. And look, what I'm having frequent suicidal thoughts. You better believe that I'm going to use him to tap a prank over the goal line. This is how it works. I use whatever I've got to hand. He's he's not not over this experience, man. I don't fucking blame him either, to be honest. Remember, we've got a deal, haven't we? If there's ever any problems, I'll bring them straight to you. That's what you told me to do. Any problems, bring them straight to you. Yeah, you don't have to do it every day of the fucking week, though. Like a face-to-face meeting, because over the phone, this guy is unprankable. <laughs> A week later, I go into his office, he sat behind his desk, I'm straight on the offensive. You gaslit me! I just learnt what gaslighting meant and I really wanted to use it. (laughs) That's true though, that's exactly what he did. If you've never accused anyone of gaslighting you before, I highly recommend it. (laughs) Oh, there's nothing they can say in response that doesn't make him sound like a gaslighter. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I ain't gaslight you, James. I was on the back foot during that phone call. I always am with you. You've been phoning me up all year, shouting at me down the phone, but it's his side of the story. I'm not going to tell you what I think in that bit. <laughs> we, we understand. Perfectly clear. He dropped me like that over the phone the next day. Wow. And so we couldn't say it to my face or wait till I got back five days later. He had to do it. He had to do it over the phone. You know, Damn, man, this is so personal. You're mentally ill. Make sure you reiterate the last thing you shouldn't have said to them. And then end the phone call with a classic phrase. Being your agent this last year has been like being in an abusive relationship. God. With another familiar phrase, um, I probably shouldn't say this, but. So, he knows what the boundaries are, he's a good guy. <laughs> that was scathing, man. That whole story was absolutely savage. I, I, I think this is worse, actually, is the fact that the, the prank didn't even work. Netflix said it was fine. <laughs> Really? And after all that, it was no problem? I put so much effort into that prank. Do you have any idea? Oh my god. Oh my god. That is... That's infuriating. That there was never even an issue about it. I went to therapy for the first time at 32 years old. Because I'm British, and that's what it takes. (laughs) 
I've been seeing this therapist for about nine months at this point. Back from the north of England, straight into a therapy session, and told her all about my agent dropping me. I told her my side of the story, which you lot will never hear. <laughs> I used to be in a bunch of bands. She was like, okay, what bands were you in? And I went into this answer, seeing no danger signs whatsoever. <laughs> She was like, okay, you've clearly got some issues here with rejection. As soon as she said rejection, my whole life made sense. Do you ever have that? You hear like a word or a phrase and everything shifts in the focus. Like, of course. Yeah. I've always been terrified of rejection. 100%. It was actually quite exciting. Like I was solving a puzzle. I could feel myself getting better. Yeah, I totally know where he's coming from with this. If she wasn't there, she'd forgotten and didn't turn up to our appointment. <laughs> no. So just to recap, a week after the rejection issues chat, I got stood up by my therapist. <laughs> oh, no. Standing on the doorstep for what must have been like There was confetti all over the floor. I didn't know why at the time. I later discovered that earlier that week, she got married. So that was from her wedding. So I was standing in my therapist's wedding confetti, and pressing the buzzer, <laughs> and she wasn't know. there. That's the kind of scene that you describe to a therapist. <laughs> I was standing in someone else's happiness and no one was letting me in. It's, it's too on the nose. It sounds manufactured. Oh, you couldn't get more, like, your heart ripped out than that kind of thing at that moment. Fuck it out. My son is a fan of yours now. I was like, oh, that is a coincidence. How did he discover yeah. my comedy? She went, I introduced him to you. I was like, that's not good. Now, he does know that I know you, but don't worry. When he asked me how I knew you, I said, I can't tell you. And I wonder what that means, you fucking therapist. God damn. I'd have said I was a baker, personally, but nice save. <laughs> I couldn't keep going to those sessions. She's crossed a big line there. Yeah, that's pretty unethical. But I feel like it's now time for me to move on. And as I was writing this, I realised a year ago, I never would have been able to be there. Hey, yeah, that's growth. And then I was like, oh shit, this means she's good. <laughs> I don't think, did she? No, surely not. So I can leave a good therapist or I can stay with a bad therapist. That's my two fucking bandersnatch. Enjoy that shit. That's my two choices. <laughs> We're gonna read some text messages out now. Really? And yeah, like this is usually the response. It gets just a little bit awkward. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. No one's ever like, yeah, read the text. <laughs> I don't know if he should do that, actually. <laughs> I'm, I'm with it. I agree. I found them incredibly helpful this year, but feel like it's now time for me to move on. Thanks for all your help, and I wish you all the best for the future. Claude. Changed my name as well. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a GTA 3 reference there, a eh, Caster? I don't owe her a goodbye face to face. She's offering a service, I'm paying her for that service, I'm now cancelling that service. Yeah. Also, my son is your fan! So Ooh. ruthlessness comes at a guilt price. What? Sorry, but this is the truth. What the hell does that mean? That, that is horrendous. Others might be thinking to yourselves, James, I don't fully understand what that sentence means. <laughs> Ruthlessness comes at a guilt price. Who's his therapist? Game of Thrones? <laughs> and because her son is a fan of mine, I should feel guilty about that. Really? Screw you. Less than a minute between those texts, I'd say. That was still long enough for me to read the first one, feel guilty and go, oh, no, she's right. I should be meeting up with her. And reply <laughs> saying, sure, where and when. And then my reply came through at the exact oh, same time. Oh, that sucks. I pick my children up at 3.15, Mondays to Fridays, from school. Can we take them to a theatre event or just to eat ice cream? This is absolute madness. Don't worry, you've not missed a text. Yeah, what the hell? For her for help, and when I tried to leave, she blackmailed me. <laughs> Are you looking forward to the theatre event later? <laughs> the theatre event. <laughs> this is absolutely Messed up though, man. Real bad. That's two meetings, isn't it? One me and her, and never as a family, it turns out. They both on the clock. Waiter, another round of splits. These are getting melty. <laughs> Hurry up, I have rejection issues. <laughs> Four tickets to Matilda, please. And that's the theatre event. <laughs> Hi, Claude. 
didn't hear back from you about this morning. As I say, it's best to say goodbye in person. Do you want to try again for next week? Then I'll reply to that one immediately. No hesitation, straight away. Because I had a draft saved. <laughs> oh, really? Really? <laughs> You know, I never want to be on the end of a draft from somebody like James A. Caster. Something that he's formulated over time. I can't wait for this. This text message is the greatest bit of writing I've ever been involved in. <laughs> I'm keen. Let's go. Read the text. In our sessions this year, we've talked about many things. But some big recurring subjects have been finding it hard to be the one to end any sort of relationship and fans demanding things from me. Oh, shit. Has exploited all four of these things. <laughs> this feels inappropriate, and for that reason, I do not want to meet in person. Claude. Well done, Claude. A text so good that you stop being angry and start getting excited about their reply. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That lady would have been like, oh, shit. Although, it, she doesn't sound very um, self-aware anyway. Well done, you. Good wishes for the future. Bye. <clears throat> I was staring at my phone like, I'm a... What, was this a test? No, it wasn't a test. That is her making the best of a situation. She's a genius. I bet she doesn't even have a son. <laughs> it almost feels like it could be the case because it's so unbelievably hypocritical of her. Reverse psychology? Is that what it was? It's ballsy. But I'm talking about her on stage. She might take all those notes that she wrote down in our sessions and publish them on the internet so everyone knows... I'm not allowed to do that. And telling you the most embarrassing thing that I told her so she doesn't have any ammunition anymore. Alright, good. This is the shitting yourself in a steakhouse, I hope. You won't go through the exact same things as me, but you'll have similar challenges that you've got to keep on top of. It shouldn't be embarrassing talking about that sort of stuff, but I can't help but notice yeah. that... Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, 100%. And you know what? The fact that he is criticizing his uh, therapists in this one here, I think that's... And also his agent as well. People sort of hold these relationships like, oh, like I, I'm, I must always have loyalty and gratitude towards this person because they helped me years and years and years ago. I think it's good that he's saying, screw that relationship, I'm, I'm not going to put up with it. And again, pointing out this um, therapist and uh, their flaws is a very strong thing because going to therapy in itself is a very intimidating thing and people feel really uncomfortable even talking about it. But this has been a really um, open and honest conversation about those kind of things and I respect it. Absolutely fucked up a joke with your wokeness. Congratulations. Punchline was on its way. Not get in there before. Flag up how cool you are. Whoops. I paused it and had a big rant first. It's my bad. It's important shit though. Come on, shut up. But well, I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> oh, really? And you have to resist that urge to applaud. That bit I just did isn't really strictly worded. I just I go with my heart every night. I went with it way too much tonight and I really stirred up some emotions in you. <laughs> Mental health shouldn't be embarrassing to talk about, but I can't help but notice you've all been sitting there tonight not shitting in your pants. <laughs> Shitting yourself is far more embarrassing, I agree. Boo hoo hoo about people doing fake R noises. I've had, I've had people walk out within the first four minutes of the show and then complain that they're Christians over the top of an email and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and then he became Prime Minister. Like, just constant moments of me going, maybe now we're going to make the right decision. No, nope. <laughs> bad luck, James. Every time. Damn, Oh, uh, you'll cry, baby. When you thoughts and going, yeah, that'll be why everyone's voting for him, that'll be why. Yeah. The horrible nation of people and, and like, just people sticking up for him all the time. People defending him, like he needs defending. He's the Prime Minister. He's doing all right. Man, he's talking about Boris Johnson, I hear Trump uh, in the exact same context. I have no kind of optimism about my job anymore. You know, I don't disagree. I don't disagree at all. I feel like this is kind of a global feeling at the moment. Anyway, long story short, I was having a piss and my body went the more the merrier. <laughs> so, so hey, you shat standing up at the urinal? <laughs> Good work. 
At the time, I'd just done a TV show, so I was wearing a backpack, and in the backpack I had a full change of clothes for the show, plus some makeup wipes for after, which is a pretty ideal time to shit yourself. Yeah, when you've got your Just Shit My Pants kit on your back. <laughs> I can clean all the shit up with the makeup wipes now. I've landed on my feet at long last. <laughs> Put on my new threads, re-entered the restaurant wearing a completely different outfit than the one I'd gone in with. <laughs> Walked up to where my agent was sitting and went, we got to leave now, I've shit myself. <laughs> I'm in my 30s, I don't dance around those subjects anymore. I'm going to shit my pants, we got to go. <laughs> but boxer shorts into the tiniest little bin imaginable and we need to leave before somebody finds those. <laughs> Eat here for ages. I just want to celebrate the TV show. Come on, you say yourself you've cleaned yourself up. For me, just sit down. Come on, for me, sit down, please. No, let's get the hell out of here, man. But I sat down and I watched me at a full steak dinner while I still had what I would describe as an unacceptable amount of shit on me. <laughs> it was a horrible evening, just the absolute worst. I mean, I've been looking forward to that steak for ages, and all I got was shit in the end. Yeah, ding, ding, ding. Well done. It's good now. I mean, you know, 2018 was way better than 2017. You know, I can't pretend to you like it was smooth sailing. Oh, yeah, and then 2020 hit pretty hard, man. <laughs> Pissed. And my agent is top notch. Oh, also, uh, people normally like this trivia about my agent. Uh, guess who else she represents? Ron Atkinson. <laughs> <True. Google that. laughs> I bet she loved this stand-up, didn't she? <laughs> wow, that was a that was a long stand-up special, but he had a lot to say, and I'm glad that he made it as long as he did because that uh, the story that he was telling with his um, therapist and his agent and all the stuff in the second sort of half of it, I think that story needed its its room and its time to settle and land and be heard and uh it's hard to do a story like that in a stand-up comedy special but if you're as engaging and articulate and um well-spoken and, and hilarious as james ancaster is you can get away with it and i think he absolutely nailed it now let's talk about some shit in yourself stories first one friend of mine laying in bed with his missus went to fart shit himself his missus was like mid-conversation with him about something. He just got up, walked out, and went into the bathroom. <laughs> Didn't even tell her what he was doing. He just like walked off. Myself. Now, I've never had a real proper accidental pants shitting as an adult. With the exception of one time. And it's funny that he mentioned food poisoning. Because I had salmonella poisoning at one point. And I was, I, I was just, water was just going straight through me. And I ended up in hospital on a drip. And I hadn't eaten for like three days. I hadn't even been peeing because I just had nothing in there to pee. They put me on the drip. Uh, I, I needed to go to the toilet and I got up, went to the little bathroom in my uh, hospital room, started pissing and immediately just like shit all over the back of my legs. So I understand exactly what he was going through. I was connected to the thing as well. So I'm like walking around <laughs> covered in shit with... Um, a, uh, the IV on like the little trolley thing as well connected to my veins. It was a rough, uh, like eight weeks <laughs> to be honest. I lost like 15 kilos in that time. It was uh, bad sushi. I've had sushi one time in my life. It was mandatory. I had it at the job I was working at during induction and, uh, it gave me salmonella poisoning. So no thanks on the sushi. But this stand-up special was uh, so much fun. The whole Rowan Atkinson story was hilarious. And the stories that he tells about his youth, I can picture them. I'm so there. Like, he, of all the people that I've learned about from watching Taskmaster on the channel, Acaster is the one that I really feel like I just vibe with on, like, the most um, complete level. Like, just everything he says, every tiny little extra thing that he adds in like I hear it and I get it and I love it and I just think 
His stand-up is great. I can't wait to watch his Netflix stand-ups. Uh, I'll be doing those at some point soon. I'm on Taskmaster Season 9 at the moment, so uh, if you do enjoy that, make sure you subscribe to that. But there will be more Acaster on the channel. He's in the new Ghostbusters movie, which uh, I reacted to the first one on the channel a couple of years ago. I think I'm going to react to the second one when it comes up for streaming as well, because... Like I say, love this guy, I'm officially a fan, and I want to see him become a uh, big star, and I'm here to support it. And uh, make sure you support Acaster as well, if you want to see the full stand-up special, it is on his website. And I think it's very much worth the money to, uh, to give it a watch. You can download it and watch it whenever you want. But I hope you enjoyed this reaction, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure you go to patreon.com slash fwci if you want to support the channel a little bit further. And as always, everyone, be well, stay safe, look after your friends, see you in the next video. Peace.